Today, many people qualify for some kind of spirituality. They want to prophesy, know the future, hear the voice of God. They read the Bible many times, but don't understand anything in it. How to understand this holy book. And even more difficult, how to fulfill in your life everything that is written there. In this video, we will clearly explain and tell you what each message of the Holy Scripture says. We offer seven steps to understanding the Bible that will help you understand God, the New Testament, and the good news. You'll see how to establish yourself and not stray from the right path. So the Bible consists of two parts, the Old and New Testaments. The Old Testament describes the creation of the world, the first people, their fall, the global flood, the Tower of Babel, and the confusion of languages and also God's choosing of the Jewish people, whose goal was to bring enlightenment and the light of the Word of God to all pagan nations. In the Old Testament, the prophets spoke about the coming of the Messiah to earth, and all these prophecies were exactly fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The Savior was born, who was Christ the Lord, and the new chronology began. Let's move on to the New Testament and look at the seven steps to understanding the Bible. So the first step, the New Testament begins with the Gospel of Matthew. What idea does it convey? The apostle and evangelist Matthew reveals the will of God for the life of each person. To be the family of God, disciples of Jesus Christ, who are like-minded and united daily in fellowship, prayer, and preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is, we must ourselves be disciples of Jesus and help other people follow the Lord. The second step, the gospel of Mark. In his message, Mark focuses us on miracles, and he raises two questions. Hardness of heart and faith. The hardness of heart does not allow us to see and accept the miracles and glory of God that the Lord reveals. With great emphasis on miracles, he shows how many times the glory of God appeared among the people. But despite the signs and wonders, people did not believe and could not become children of God. When Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to the disciples, he upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe in his resurrection. Mark shows us what keeps us from fully becoming children of God, from believing in God. This is our heart. If the heart is stony and we do not cleanse it with the word of God and repentance, then it does not allow us to be immersed and baptized into Jesus. After all, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. To be baptized means to immerse yourself in Jesus, in the word of God, then the heart will change and faith will come. Without baptism into Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. The third step, the Gospel of Luke. Luke was a pagan, and in his epistle, he also addresses the pagans. Throughout the Gospel, it is clear that Luke is talking specifically about the kingdom of God. The pagans have all their focus on matter, on the flesh, on what they see today and now, on the riches of this world, but not on the spiritual aspect, not on the kingdom of God. Where is this kingdom of God and how to find it? To understand and see the kingdom of God, we need repentance. If there is no full repentance, then we remain at the level of the pagan world, at the level of matter and knowledge. Sincere repentance is when we realize our sin, correct ourselves and change. Then the kingdom of God opens to us if the motives of the heart and all our thoughts are about the eternal, spiritual, incorruptible, and we live for the sake of Christ and the gospel, then the kingdom of God is within us. In chapter 16, Luke reveals the spiritual world through the story of the rich man and Lazarus and shows where the souls of people go after death. The rich man went to hell. Why? He said no to the word of God, no to the prophets and apostles. He did not repent and lived only in the material world. He did not care about the spiritual and eternal in his life. Many people say, I will arrange my life anywhere, even in hell. But this is not true at all. Luke describes hell and what awaits the souls of sinners there. If our values were only material, carnal, and earthly, and we did not accept the church, the apostles and prophets who helped us grow in faith, then the kingdom of God is closed to us, and it's scary. Let's see further. The fourth step, the Gospel of John. He shows us, firstly, that Jesus is God. His message begins with the verses, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is why Christ was killed, because he made himself equal to God. John affirms the divinity of Christ. Secondly, the apostle focuses us on being born again from God. This supernatural birth is not of flesh and blood, but of the Spirit. 
It is well illustrated by the example of Nicodemus, who came at night to communicate with Jesus. Jesus told him, Unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. But Nicodemus did not understand what Jesus was talking about, and all his religiosity and knowledge did not help him. After all, Jesus spoke about being born again from the Spirit. This is a spiritual action, not a physical one. Being born again is the most important goal of our lives to inherit heaven. John ends his message by saying that after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the apostles and breathed the Spirit into them, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. Before this, the disciples did not fully understand Scripture, God, or the will of God. But they received the Holy Spirit and birth came from God. We need to come alive spiritually to go around the world and help people to the ends of the earth to be born again. The fifth step, the book of Acts of the Holy Apostles or Acts of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. When the Holy Spirit comes, people receive power and become witnesses of Jesus to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit and the apostles built the church. The disciples of Christ were active evangelists and preached the gospel. But it was the Holy Spirit who added those who were being saved to the church. Through the Holy Spirit, the apostles had communication with God. The Spirit leads and gives clarity on how to build the church and how to live and to serve under any circumstances. We need to learn from the apostles to build the church and reach the world with the gospel just like they did. The sixth step message to the churches from the apostles. Hebrews, Romans, Corinthians, and other epistles show us the work of the Holy Spirit and how the church was built on the foundation of the apostles. All messages are combined and written for the church. Today, there is a lot of discussion. Do we need a church and a pastor or not? And what kind of church should there be? But the Bible gives a clear answer. The church is needed. It was built by Jesus himself and the apostles continued to build the church. The church must be righteous and holy, the bride of Jesus Christ, who waits for her king and spreads the aroma of the knowledge of him to the ends of the earth. The seventh step, the book of Revelation, book of conclusion. In it, we see that Jesus himself affirms all of these points above, that they are all important for being born again in our spiritual formation. Jesus is already in heaven next to the Father. He shows and confirms his divinity that he is the Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus holds the keys of hell and death. But also in this message, we see that Jesus is in the midst of the church and through the spirit, he is building it up. Jesus knows what is happening in each church and through John, he gives corrections to the churches. The conclusion book shows that apostles and pastors are valuable to God. He holds them in his hand. Also, the church is important to Jesus because it is the body of Christ. Well, let's summarize. In order to understand the Bible and learn to live by it, we need, firstly, become disciples of Jesus Christ and help other people become followers of Christ. Secondly, cleanse your heart through repentance and have faith in God. Thirdly, focus on the kingdom of God, not on matter and flesh. Fourthly, to be born again is to be born of God. Fifthly, be part of the biblical apostolic church and listen to the apostles and prophets. Sixthly, understand when and how the Holy Spirit works. Seventhly, don't turn from the teachings of Christ and the holy apostles to the right or to the left. This way we can understand the Bible, have salvation and eternal life. Subscribe to our channel and study the Bible with us. Every day we are in fellowship and prayer according to the commandment of Christ. We invite you to build the first apostolic church with us today. May God protect you.